if you start to learn to really focus on your hips and train your hips and use them efficiently and, you know, keep them primed and lubed, if you will, like a, like a solid engine, it can keep you out of a nursing home. It can keep you out of a wheelchair. Faster than a speeding bullet. I ran until my muscles burned and my veins pumped battery acid. More powerful than a locomotive. An idea is like a virus. Resilient. Highly contagious. Able to leap tall buildings with a single bound. Hey guys, Jared Moon here, and this week on the Better Humanology Podcast, we have Ryan Moody. Uh, Ryan is a subject matter expert in explosive training, and he holds multiple world records in jumping, so this dude can actually make you and I a better human through explosive training. So I'm super excited to talk to him, uh, pick his brain, and find out exactly how he can make us all a little bit better than we were yesterday. Uh, but before we hop into the the podcast with Ryan, I do want to say head over to into3fitness.com and sign up for the newsletter. Uh, a lot of good stuff coming your way, and you're going to want to be the first to know. So sign up uh, after you do that. Let's listen to the podcast with Ryan today and become better humans through explosive training. Hey, man, thanks for being on the show. Really excited to have you on today. Um, you're mm-hmm. all about explosive training and I know people might not know a ton about that, so I'm glad to have you on the Better Humanology podcast. And if we could just go ahead and get started with, you know, you kind of tell me about you, uh, where you came from, you're born, and, and now you're here, you know, uh, how, how'd you get here? Right on. Well, uh, first of all, you know, Jared, thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity. Um, so, yeah, uh, as for the podcast, my name is Ryan Moody. Born and raised in Dallas, Texas. I'm currently living in Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm a graduate of both Boise State University and the University of Utah with a degree in exercise sports science. Um, and I've fitness and really exercise and explosive training even has been a good portion of my life playing sports or, or otherwise. And that's that's kind of where it's all you know coming to a culmination of. So. Yeah, and can you tell me a little bit more about your jumping history you know like where i know that you you hold some world records and uh you've done some pretty amazing stuff despite some uh previous hurdles as far as injuries can you tell me a little bit about that journey absolutely so um growing up i you know, i was in martial arts i took taekwondo for years and, and i also played basketball since i was real little and you know both sports there's a good amount of jumping involved um and being explosive, if you will. And so I, I was always jumping. I was a really rum, rum, rambunctious kid, and uh, so I was always practicing jumping or, or being faster than others. And, and uh, so part of that growing up, you know, I was kind of built up, you know, with that or, or grew up with that. Uh, the whole record thing came about literally by accident. I was living in Boise at the time, and I went – snowboarding for the first time up on Bogus Mountain and we'd be out there with my friends and I'm doing good, you know, having a lot of fun with it and they're like, oh man, you should go try to hit this jump and I'm like, all right, yeah, let's go and I'm watching them go and they're not going fast enough and there's a lot of powder down at the jump itself so they're, by the time they hit the jump, and they, you know, they just kind of bloop right over the top of it and, you know, don't really get in the air and in my mind, I'm like, man, you gotta go, like, hardcore, right? So I'm booking it down this mountain towards this this uh, jump and I realized that I'm now going faster than I've ever gone before. So I can <laughs> really lose my focus. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm waking up, um, I'm on my back and you know, it's like a lawn sale with all my gear just everywhere. My buddies are laughing and I go to straighten out my, my legs and makes, you know, just kind of take an inventory, see what's going on, see how I'm feeling. And my kneecaps basically go from one side to the other. Oof. And, uh, I was like, okay, I definitely did some damage. Um, turns out I'd broken off part of my femur on my right leg, uh, and I tore ligaments and tendons in my knees. Um, I didn't realize how much damage was done at the time. And I actually went back to Texas almost a year and a half later. So I walked around like that for a year and a half, wow. not even realizing that there was a, a floating piece of femur, uh, you know, in, in my right leg and went to the Cooper clinic out there and they did surgery on my knees and I used... CrossFit training as well as box jumps because we used to do them in high school for basketball. I used those as my recovery. 
So I did my own therapy for about nine months. And one day I realized from doing some of the box jumps that I could actually go pretty high. And I had some of the members that were like, oh, man, you should see if there's a world record. And I was like, no, 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 that's silly. And um, about, about a year or two later, I moved down to Utah. And I was uh, one of the coaches for Cross the 801 back when Tyson and Miranda Oldroyd uh, used to own the gym. Yeah. And they, they helped push me to, to go ahead and go out for that record and, and break it anyways. So I broke the first record by an inch in 2010. Wow, that's awesome. I think... Most people could have an injury like that and then like just use it as an excuse for the rest of their life and you use it as a uh, as a launching board to set world records, which is pretty impressive. Well, I appreciate that. One of the, the things that I, I really believe in is when you know, when stuff happens to us, it's not it's not what happens to us, but it's what we do in that moment that really really separates people. Right? Yeah. Um and my biggest thing is, you know, I when I when I start to become limited, I try not to see it as a limitation, but I rather just see it as an opportunity. You know, there's something good that can be learned from or can come from this. Let's figure out what it is. Yeah, I think that's a great mindset to have. All right, man. So you mentioned explosive training early on. We were talking about your background, and uh, I know that not all of my listeners listeners are going to know exactly. Uh, what explosive training is. Uh, hey, I don't even fully know uh, what your training looks like. So can we talk a little bit about what being explosive is and kind of what training to be explosive looks like? Absolutely, absolutely. So I like to use the the analogy of, of sports, right? So in sports, uh, having the fastest first step or being able to out-jump the person next to you, your defender or otherwise, is, is huge. So really that comes down to your explosive ability as an individual, as an athlete or otherwise. And that's what we tap into. So we really help people to jump higher, run faster, lift heavier, um, have a greater rate of success, PR quicker. I mean, you name it. And one of the main focus, focal points, if you will, is the hips and the shoulders, right? Because they're obviously key to everything that we, we do in life, sport, fitness, you name it. And so we focus on teaching individuals to really tap into their potential and in turn, making them faster, jump higher, lift heavier, you know, you name it. And so that's, that's really what it comes down to when, when we talk about explosive training and it's not just, you know, Oh, you know, we're just going to do a lot of jumping or, or otherwise explosive training actually has three pathways and the three pathways towards explosive training are jumping or plyometric training. And the second one is sprinting, but not just sprinting, sprinting short distances, really short distances. And finally, lifting. And I use the term lifting because, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, weightlifting or powerlifting. And, you know, really any format of lifting can be used in explosive training. You know, powerlifting, weightlifting, all the above, right? Those, those can be used in an explosive format. And think of it kind of as a, an upside-down pyramid. So at the top, you have your jumping or your plyometric training, and that creates the or elicits the greatest stimulus or adaptation. Um, and then it, it goes down from there. So you actually get a lot of explosiveness, if you will, or greater explosive ability from doing your jumping and plyometric training. You get a little bit less from doing your sprinting and sprinting short distances, and you get a little bit less from lifting. And uh, we, we talk about that a lot at the Explosive Training Seminar. And we go into detail as to why that is the case and why we should focus on plyometric training uh, mixed in with sprinting, mixed in with a little bit of lifting. And uh, what we found is, you know, over the past several years, is it really transforms athletes and, and individuals. And we, we've taken, for example, one of my favorite ones to use is a swimmer. We have a swimmer uh, in Utah who, who has consistently, over the past nearly two years, consistently broken times and records at meets. He went from kind of an intermediate swimmer to breaking state and national records and competing in divisions where a lot of the athletes are much older than him. Uh, he shaved four minutes off of his mile swim time. Wow. Um, and he, uh, like I was just talking to his mom just the other day, just checking in to see what his, his how he's doing in his meets. And he, uh, he had uh, broken a record for 100-meter fly, uh, won a regional championship, doing so and helped take his team in several relays into a second place finish and broken records or tied records 
in every single event he competed in. And it's, it's not uncommon, but his mom is always like, you know, I, I don't I don't take him to do it with a coach once to do training wise. I take him to you because when we do this explosive training stuff, it makes the biggest difference, and he is only dropping times. So it's it's uh, it's definitely a potent tool, if you will. Yeah, and that's and that's what makes it so interesting to me because people might think of uh, explosive training as only plyometrics, or they might not think that it will be beneficial for them because maybe they don't want to jump or or they don't see the real value in being explosive. But like you said, it can help in every regard. It's helping a swimmer, which is super impressive. But uh, strength training alone, I know that you, I, I don't know the exact numbers, but I remember seeing a video of you pulling like 600 plus pounds in the deadlift, which is just, you know, insane weight. And uh, <laughs> like your, your your primary, you know, sport, I would say is is jumping. But I mean, that's like some heavy duty powerlifting weight right there too. I mean, it's it's amazing what uh, what this explosive training can do. Oh yeah, no, I, mean, I appreciate that, and um, I think the video you're referring to, I was in Ecuador teaching a seminar, and uh, during one of the the downtimes, I uh, was pulling practicing practice, practicing some uh, sumo deadlifts because at the time um, I was also training back home. I was actually training in uh, Columbus at at Westside Barbell, and so I was pulling that heavy load to prove to Louie that I'm still hitting my PRs while I'm traveling. So I pulled about 655 pounds at roughly about 181 pounds body weight. Wow. That's, that's insane, man. That's awesome. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so I, and I, I don't know what to, if I should call you a jumper or what, because you, you have all these records, but I do want to know more about the jumping, uh, because obviously some of it is genetic. And the only reason I say that is because I have some natural jumping ability and uh, uh, not to the world record level, but, you know, I can get to the rim at least, uh, you know, and, and stuff like that. But, you know, right. I, I've always just kind of had that. I've never never trained it specifically. So what do you think that, you know, training specifically for jumping, uh, you know, getting a vertical, um, I guess, what results can you expect if, if uh, I don't know, you don't have a very good jump, or if it, you're right there, you have a pretty good jump. Like, what what's a realistic uh, view of what you could do through proper use of explosive training? Absolutely, and I, I think that's a fantastic question too. So, thank you for asking. Um, so, I'll break this down into a few different pieces, and and I'll, I'll just kind of bring it around full circle. Um, so, bear with me if it sounds like I'm trailing off. <laughs> but what it what it comes down to is a, is a few things with. Um, with jumping, and as you're saying, genetics do play a role, you know, and, and unfortunately, we, that's not something that, you know, we can change. We can't go back and get a different mom and different dad, you know, and, and hope to, hope to, the equation in, ends up being better results for our, our jumping ability. But the other two components are skill-related, right, and, and, a, and a, a person's ability to be coachable or teachable. Okay. So you know, how coordinated is this individual and with the, with the skill sets that they currently have, where can they actually be taken to in the future? How coachable are they? You know, is this something where this is going to take several years to get them jumping higher or is this something where, you know, we make a few tweaks on this individual, teach the individual a few things to improve their overall, um, uh, you know, skill set, if you will, you know, they can be jumping through the roof. Um, so those are the three components that, that we've, we've really come down to. And, and that was something that we had discussed at the University of Utah while I was with Dr. Charlie Hicks, who is one of the leading um, experts in motion capture as well as uh, force plate uh, uh, work and, and studies. So we, we've actually done a good amount of research surrounding this, and we're hoping to uh, launch what they refer to in the journal world as a poster at an upcoming uh, upcoming um, uh, fitness event where researchers gather together to learn about the new, new research that's coming out in the, in the exercise sports science world. So that's what it comes to jumping. You know, you, you got to be coachable. There's got to be a, a decent skill set, and then genetics do play a role where there is a, there is a glass ceiling, if you will, um, for a lot of individuals. But with that being said, the beautiful thing about it is everyone starts somewhere, and everyone has the ability to improve. And we've, we've seen that with everyone from your ordinary 
athlete to non-athlete to Olympic-level athlete to individuals with multiple sclerosis and cerebral palsy. Um, It's pretty impressive that we can take individuals that either don't know how to jump uh, or otherwise and get them to a point where their their central nervous system is firing or being reprogrammed, quote-unquote, if you will, to be able to jump. Um, which in the case of Steph Hammerman is, is something that we explored early on. And if you ever get a chance to, to chat with Steph Hammerman, Hammerman, I totally, uh, you know, I would totally say to do so. But going a little bit further into, uh, the jumping, when it comes to, to jumping or improving your jumping ability, um, one, it, it's like, you know, how do you get better at riding a bike? Well, you got to get back on the saddle and you got to ride. You know, you got to practice. You got to follow a lot, et cetera. Same kind of concept with jumping. You can improve jumping by simply jumping. Hmm. Um, but when mixed with the proper format of training or programming, if you will, it can elicit an even more incredible response. And, you know, the p- potential that you hear from your coach that you have, all of a sudden you start unlocking that and going, whoa, where did this come from? Uh, but jumping training caters to everything we do. So let's take away the word jumping or plyometric. And let's look at the, the human format, right? The human figure. So focus on the hips, right? The hips are our powerhouse, our pelvic unit, right? That's where all the power comes from, quarter extremity, et cetera. Well, when we focus on, on making our hips more explosive or making our hips, our ability to turn our hips over through, you know, through jumping, through running, et cetera, when we focus on that area more, all of a sudden we start lifting more. All of a sudden we start jumping higher. All of a sudden we start running faster. So in our society, you know, a society that, you know, admittingly sits a lot more than many other societies in the world, yeah. we have become um, disassociated, if you will, with our ability to use our hips. And... I, I feel that's why we see a lot of individuals who have a lot of mobility issues. You know, it's hard for people to get down into squats. When you go to a throttle country, they can plop down in a, uh, an astrograph squat while they're smoking for hours. Right. right. But here in America, you try to get someone to squat their, their butt to the ground, it's not going to happen. Yeah. You know, it's going to, you're going to need a team of people to help them get in that position. So it's, it's really easy to tap into that. Well, that caters to so much. For example, one of the things that we found out is, especially in the world of CrossFit or functional fitness, the posterior chain is one of the most neglected aspects of training. And when we start teaching someone how to really use their posterior chain, more so than just a deadlift, but really teaching them to engage their posterior chain and utilize their posterior chain, all of a sudden their lifts go up, their, their sprinting ability goes up, their jumping ability, I mean, you know, you name it. But again, the posterior chain is connected to our powerhouse. So, Focusing on the hips is a huge aspect of explosive training, and it can help athletes in whatever sport they're in. I mean, we've worked with um, one of, uh, well, we've worked with two Olympians, uh, Kendrick Ferris, Holly Mangold, and then we've worked with almost every athlete in every professional sport that's out there. And one of my favorite examples to use is one of the greatest uh, big, big wave surfers in the world, Shane Dorian. Well, I, I was working with Shane while I was on uh, when I was in Kona, Hawaii, and the reason I was working with him on it is to help him to carve more efficiently and faster while he's on the board to be able to get up onto a board faster as he's paddling, you know, paddling into a wave, and to stay far enough ab- uh, in front of the, the wave that he can go for longer instead of wiping out or otherwise or the wave catching up to him and, and you know him getting caught under the rip curl or what have you. So, again, it, it all comes down to if, if, we can, if we can train you at your hips, it's going to not only cater to your sport or fitness, but life in general. And one of, the, one of my favorite things to say at the seminars is, you know, if you start to learn to really focus on your hips and train your hips and use them efficiently and, you know, keep them primed and lubed, if you will, like a, like a solid engine – it can keep you out of a nursing home. It can keep you out of a wheelchair, right? It can keep you from having to use a walker because uh, as we get older, one of the biggest issues is when we start to deteriorate at our ability to have, uh, you know, a solid gait while walking or to be able to get up, up and down and our hips 
aren't as efficient as they used to be, that's when quality of life really declines really quickly and in, in, in turn, so does lifespan. And that's, that's just crazy. I mean, the, who knew the, the power of the hips would, would go, like, I mean, I, I know the, the power of the hips as a, as a coach myself when teaching different lifts and uh, especially the Olympic lifts and stuff, but I would have never thought things like uh, surfing, you know, that, that's pretty, I mean, it makes perfect sense now that, now that I heard you say it, but that's just right. crazy how far the, the explosive training can, can go. And, Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, the thing that's tough is, you know, we, we, we've done 200 plus seminars in nine different countries over the past few years. And, and we've, one thing that's hard to get people in the door to come to the seminars, they're like, oh, Ryan Moody, are we just going to box jump for five hours? Because <laughs> I don't want to box jump. And it's like, no, 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 no. We're going to do a little bit of box jumping. It's one of seven parts that we cover. But what we're doing is literally resetting you and resetting your hips to be able to produce the power and efficiency that you've always either known you've had or always wanted to have. And when once we get people in the door and they go to the seminar, their minds are, are blown. Like you were just saying, you know, surfing at first, you know, you don't really see it. But once it's explained to you, you're going, oh, my gosh, that makes a lot of sense. Right. And, and that's the hard thing is getting people past the fact that, you know, for, for years, I've, for a living, I jumped on a box. Right. Yeah. <laughs> And so I kind of want to use that to transition to your training. And I, I know that you trained with uh, quite possibly my favorite coach uh, out there. I've read everything that he's published, watched every th- video he's made, uh, which is Louis Simmons from Westside Barbell. And uh, you got to train under Louis for a while. So I just, you know, out of personal curiosity, I'd love to know uh, kind of what programming he, he was uh, throwing you through or, or what he helped you with. So I'd like to to go out first and say that's awesome that you that you love Louie. Louie, when I was out there training in Columbus, which has been a few different times, and and I've also worked with uh, Laura Phelps and Shane uh, Sweat as, as well, which is awesome because I really feel like Shane's going to be Louie's successor if and when you know unfortunately Louie passes away or otherwise. Um, but one of the things that Louie really became to me while I was out there is he he kind of played a, if you will, fitness father role or fitness grandfather role for me mm-hmm. um, while I was out there and opened my eyes to so much. I mean, I, I sometimes refer to Louie as a savant um, because you'll interact with him one-on-one and his mind is constantly going. And sometimes when he's talking, you know, I have a degree in this stuff and he's talking and it's going way over my head and I'm like, holy moly. And he always has these nuggets that he spits out there. And if you're not paying attention, you're missing golden opportunities to learn. And one thing that's awesome about Louie, and this is again why, why I, lo- uh, I love Louie in, in that respect as like a father or a grandfather, is he will repeat his stories again and again and again until it clicks with you. And he'll yeah. tell them several different ways. And so he has a way of getting someone to understand something whether they realize that they're trying to understand it or not, uh, if that makes sense. So, (laughs) but at at West side, man, Oh gosh, that, so I've got three places in the world that I are like my favorite when I travel, right. My favorite places to train. Top of the list is West side barbell in Columbus. Second on the list is uh, CrossFit conjugate in the sweat shop, which is Lauren and Shane sweat um, on that area, that gym, which is an incredible place too. And my third favorite place is actually on Oahu at CrossFit 50 with Jack Canberra. Um, and they're all Westside people who also have an affiliation with CrossFit in some way, shape, or form. Right. And, uh, but anyways, Westside, um, in, in, in terms that aren't offensive, Westside's one of the, <laughs> the scariest and <laughs> yeah. um, dirtiest places I've ever trained in. It's like the most underground feel type of gym I've ever been to. And the, the thing I love about Westside is you go on their website, you know, it says where their address is, but that's not where the gym is. You know, it really is an, an exclusive type of, of uh, opportunity to be able to train there. And to work with Louie on one-on-one is in- incredible. And if you ever get that opportunity, you, you hands down, whatever it costs to get you to Columbus, do it. However, whatever it costs to keep you there for as long as you can be there, do it, especially why this man is still alive, you know. Um, but how he kind of programs everything, uh, and especially with me, so I'm going to, I'm going to base it off my experience and not off what I saw with him and other athletes, because 
obviously with mine, it was very specific to me. So I, I can really vouch for, for what was, what was going down uh, for the longest time, to be honest with you, Jared, I didn't know what the programming was. Um, and I remember one day I turned to Louie, I'm breathing hard. I had just gotten off of a reverse hyper. He's got the 400 pound reverse hyper there. That's like bolted shut and it's constantly got 400 pounds on it. And, uh, he was having me use that thing. And I, it about makes me want to puke every time I use it. Um, and I go, I go, I turned to him and I said, Louie, I've got a question for you. And he's like, what do you want? And I said, well, it's what we're doing conjugate. And he started laughing. And I was like, oh, did I ask a stupid question? <laughs> and and he, he's like, Ryan, I don't know what the F I'm doing. I dream, I sleep at night and I dream things up for you to do to wow. figure out how we can take you to the next level. And for the longest time, that's that's what I understood it to be. But really, when you delve into it, it's the conjugate system totally. It's completely conjugate. And then intermingled or, you know, intertwined in there are his thoughts and ideas and what he dreams up to have me do to see what kind of response it elicits. So he was very experimental with me. The, uh, the, uh, the second time I was there, cause I was there for like two or three months and he's very experimental, but there was always a flow to it that was very conjugate. Um, and I had some of the greatest gains that I've ever had uh, while, while at Westside. I went from box squatting about 345 to box, and we're talking like two, two and a half months-ish, to box squatting uh, 525. Um, oh I went from deadlifting 585 to deadlifting 655. Uh, I mean, it's just incredible gains. And my jumping ability went up. And I went out for, after training there, I went to the Arnold Classic to try to break four world records. Um, and I ended up breaking three out of the four. And one of the ones that I was trying to break in public was standing box jump. And that was at 65 inches, which I was, um, we've got an awesome photo of it, but I've got one foot on top and my toe, my left toe is clipping the edge of the tires. Oh man. I can't actually get onto the top, but I never thought that was going to be humanly possible. Yeah. That's, um, that's insane. And Louis, Louis says that there's still more room to go. He just needs more time with me. And I'm like, Holy crap. I, <laughs> how much time do you need? You need a year? Cause maybe we can make this happen. But, uh, while I was at Westside, it was the most incredible experience I've ever had and something I will never forget. And so many lessons that I've learned from that, that I've carried over into my, my coaching aspect of what I do. Yeah, I mean, I gotta, I gotta get up there. I gotta go train with him for at least a day of my life and maybe interview him, put him on the podcast because there you go. Yeah. Like I said, I've been a huge uh, studying the conjugate, you know, method and, and applying it to my own training and stuff. And I just, the dude is a genius and you can tell that, uh, just from any time he, he talks. So I, I appreciate you kind of telling that, uh, sharing that story. And just for the listeners, if anyone out there doesn't know what the, uh, conjugate training system looks like or method looks like, or Westside barbell method, I'll put some link in the show notes where you guys can read up on that and, uh, get a little bit smarter on some very elite training, perhaps, the best uh, strength training methodology in the world. All right. Hands down. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and one, one other little tip, uh, and, and this is something that, you know, Jared, I hope that you utilize too. A lot of people don't know this, and I found this out. My The first time I ever went to Westside, I was there for two weeks. Um, and when I went there, I uh, I was watching Louie, you know, working on the computer, and he was there with Tom Barry, and they were, you know, going over stuff. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? And he's like, oh, Louie's responding emails. I was like, wait, Louie responds to every email? He's like, yeah, it takes us a while, but he responds personally to every email sent through their website. Oh, dude, that's so, crazy. So, take the time. If you want to shoot something towards him, he will talk to you. I will do that for sure. Yeah, I'm definitely going to reach out to him soon. All right, man, so we, we've kind of covered it all and how awesome explosive training is, um, but I want to give kind of everyone out there listening kind of a, an appetizer if you will on a, where to get started with explosive training whether drills they should be doing mobility jumping plyo whatever how would you recommend someone started uh start today if they wanted to start well if they wanted to start today one of the very first things that i would recommend is is going on to the xwad.com and uh, signing into our capture page right now to sign up for our our exclusive uh membership updates as we're about to launch a 
very personally catered program for the masses. Um, so that would be, that would be, you know, plugging myself right there. That'd be the uh, starting point. Uh, until then, what I would say is to have individuals start to watch a lot of videos on different types of plyometric jumps, uh, as well as different formats for sprinting, different positions to start from, et cetera. And then learning to couple or superset that with whatever lift they're working on that day, you know, be it a, a bench press, a deadlift, a, a clean, a snatch, you know, what have you. Um, and learning to kind of superset that and couple that uh and, the, and kind of feel out the response that they get from that. So um, that's what I would say to start to do, is start to look into movements that are explosive. Start trying to understand them. Watch watch how, how individuals move through an explosive movement and, and play with it yourself to figure out, is this something that's going to be beneficial for me or not? And once we launch the, uh, the new membership program, um, they can jump on there, and we have, I mean, everything to the T as to everything they could ever want explosive training-wise. And uh, whether that be tips, videos, demos, I mean, you name it, to their specific programming catered to, you know, what what category they're in, which uh, we have three categories, which is fitness, sport, and competitor. So um, I would say start there. And the other thing I would say to do, which you, you've already plugged very well, which is I would say research Westside. Re- research the conjugate system. Learn about what's referred to as uh, uh the contrast method or overstimulation because these things are going to be huge. You know, learn, learn about the, the potential myth of, of why Ben Johnson was one of the fastest starters out of the history of the hundred meter dash steroids aside um, to check, check that out and, and learn a bit more about that stuff because that's what it comes down to. Um, And the more you can understand about why jumping and sprinting, and lifting is so important for explosive training, the easier it is going to be for, you know, you as an individual to progress and grow and evolve as an athlete or non-athlete. Well, I really appreciate that. And I'm really looking forward to the launch of your, uh, you know, this new programming. It sounds really awesome. Um, but now we're going to hop into the quick fire questions of the show. Uh, you know, I'll ask you a quick question uh, and you give me a quick answer on, you know, your opinion on a couple different topics here so i'll go ahead and start are you ready i'm ready let's go all right man hardest workout you've ever done oh hardest workout i've ever done for ann yeah that's uh, that seems to be a reoccurring (laughs) answer but i agree with you it's pretty freaking awful all right man one one time i did i did uh murph and i lost a bet and did murph in a speedo and had to run up and down a very busy road that was pretty hard uh eagle wise yeah i could see that (laughs) All right, man. In your opinion, what's the best activity for building mental toughness? Um, we have a technique that we use called the whiteboard, and it's learning how to teach yourself to get out of your head. Um, so they can find out more about that, you know, through our through our website and our program. But one of the biggest things that an individual can do to get out of their head is to learn to turn their mind off, or how to have better mental training is to learn to turn their mind off and do what they were born to do, which is just move. Okay. I like that. Okay, say you and I decide to make a bad fitness decision and do a ridiculous workout <laughs> tomorrow. Would you rather do a marathon or a 1,000 burpees for time? Oh, can I give my answer and say why? Yeah. Okay, so definitely marathon. Okay. Um, I've, I've watched so many individuals who are, you know, lifetime runners or otherwise that have had so much damage done and as they've gotten older because of long, long, long distance running and improper running to their knees, to their hips, to their ankles. Like I, I'd run a marathon for the sake of doing it and saying I did it, but to do it all the time or to, to make that as my fitness decision, let's just go run really far. Um, I, I, I wouldn't agree with it. I think that's probably more damaging than burpees. I mean, burpees are are awesome. I mean, one of the things that, not that a lot of people need to know this, but one of the things that a lot of prisoners do to keep in shape when they're, when they don't have the option to use uh, equipment is they actually do tons and tons and tons of burpees. Hmm, that's interesting. That's, I mean, that's an amazing fitness regimen right there. If that's all you got is your body. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, man, if you could only have one piece of equipment to train with for the rest of your life, what would it be? Oh, that is a very, very difficult question. Um, uh, I would say 
gosh, it would be a toss up between having a barbell because there's a lot that you can do with a barbell. Um, and actually, um, I know we had talked about, a, uh, using a sled or a prowler, um, Westside's huge on that. And really with sleds and prowlers, there's so much that you can do, not just for your lower body, but for your upper body. So at the end of the day to, to keep myself fit and on par, I'd probably say sled or prowler. Okay. Yeah. Those things are pretty awful and we'll definitely keep yeah. you in, uh, in good shape. <laughs> All right, man, the last and most important question of the show that every guest gets, uh, 100% open-ended, what is your best advice uh, for becoming a better human? Oh, I love this question. That's awesome. Um, best advice for becoming a better human? I often feel that we as individuals are way too focused on what everyone else is doing. And I think when we learn ourselves in the mirror and start worrying about ourselves and what we need to do, uh, to to Im- improve ourselves is, is what makes us a better human. We, we worry too much about what everyone else is doing or what they need to work on or what they need to improve upon. Um, and in reality, you know, all that advice should really be given in the mirror. I like that, man. I really appreciate that answer. All right. Thank you. So that's it for the show, but I do want to give you, uh, you know, the listeners an opportunity to check out uh, you and what you're doing. I know we mentioned it earlier, but I think it's definitely worth repeating you know what's the best place for people to find out more about you and and learn about what you're doing um they can definitely follow us in social media media at the xwad.com is our website um they can contact me directly through there uh or through social media our social media facebook dot uh, com slash explosive seminar uh, they can also follow on instagram at the xwad all right, man, and I highly recommend everyone go check him out and the stuff he has going on. It's pretty awesome, and as you know, or as you've heard, explosive training can pretty much do everything shy of cure cancer, uh, and it might even be able to do that a little bit. That's awesome, man. I really appreciate you being on the show uh, and giving the time uh, to talk about all this stuff. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you for your time, Jared, and then, uh, thank you for all the listeners out there, and I, I hope that we provided something for for each of you that that, uh, you can take with you into your training. For sure. Thanks, man. Thank you. Hey, guys. Thanks for listening to the Better Humanology podcast. If you want to know about any of the resources we talked about, head on over to betterhumanology.com and check out the podcast show notes. Likewise, we have betterhumanology.com slash toolbox where you can find every resource that we've ever talked about on the podcast. So go check it out. Until next time, here's to becoming a better human.